Wonder of the Wasteland by Zane Grey, Chapter 21, Part 2. This country was crisscrossed by trails and arid desert, though it was every few miles showed an abandoned mine or a prospector working a claim or a shack containing a desert dweller. Adam and Dismukes were approaching the highway that bisected the Mojave Desert. It grew to be more of a sandy country, and anywhere in sand, water was always scarce. Another of Dismukes' water holes was dry. It had not been visited for months. The one wanderer who had stopped there lay there half buried in the sand, a shrunken mummy of a man with a dark and horrible mockery in the eyeless sockets of his skull. His skin was drawn like light brown parchment over his face. Adam looked and then again and gave a sudden start. He turned the sun-dried visage more to the light. He recognized that face, set in its iron mask of death with its grim grin that would grin forever until the brown skull went to dust. Reagan, he exclaimed. You know him? queried Dismukes. Yes, he was an Irishman I knew years ago. A talky, cheerful fellow, hard drinker. He loved the desert, but drink kept him in the mining camps. The last time I saw him was in Tecopa after you left. Poor devil, he died of thirst. I know that cast of face. Let's give him a decent burial. Yes, poor Reagan. He was the man who named me Wansfell. Why he called me that, I never knew, never will know. Deep in the sand, they buried the remains of Reagan and erected a rude cross to mark his lonely grave. Dismukes led Adam off the well-beaten trail one day up a narrow, sandy wash to a closed pocket that smelled old and musty. Here a green spring bubbled from under a bank of sand with clear as crystal water slightly green in tinge, sparkled and murmured. A whitish sediment bordered the tiny stream of running water. Arsenic, exclaimed Adam. Yes, and here's where I found a whole caravan of people dead. It was six years ago. Place hasn't changed much. Guess it's filled up a little with blowing sand. Aha, uh -huh, look there. Dismukes put the toe of his boot against a round white object protruding from the sand. It was a bleached skull. Men mad with desert thirst never stop to read, replied Adam sadly. In silence, Adam and Dismukes gazed down at the glistening white skull. Ghastly as it was, it yet had a beauty. Once it had been full of thought, of emotion, and now it was tenanted by the desert. Adam and Dismuke spent half a day at that arsenic spring under the burning sun, suffering the thirst they dared not slake there, and they erected a rude cross that would stand for many and many a day. Deep in the cross piece, Adam cut the words, Death, Arsenic. Spring, don't drink good water five miles, follow dry stream bed. The smukes appeared to get deep satisfaction and even happiness out of this accomplished task. It was a monument to the end of his desert experience. Goodwill toward his fellow men. At last the day came when Adam watched the smukes drive his burrows out on the lonely trail, striding along with his rolling gait, a huge, short, broad-backed man like a misshapen giant. What a stride he had. The thousands of desert miles it had mastered had not yet taken its force in spring. It was the stride of one who imagined he left nothing of life behind and saw its most calling adventures to the fore. He had tired of the desert. He had used it, he had glutted it of its riches he craved, 
and now he was heading down the trail toward the glittering haunts of men and the green pastures. Adam watched him with grief and yet with gladness and still with something of all. This Mukes's going forever was incomprehensible. Adam felt what he could not analyze. The rolling voice of Dismukes, sonorous and splendid, still rang in Adam's ears. Hardware square, goodbye. Adam understood now why a noble Indian, unspoiled by white men, reverenced a debt which involved life. The pain of that debt was all of unity and brotherhood that existed in the world. If it was great to feel gratitude for the saving of his life, it was far greater to remember he had saved the life of his Savior. Adam, deeply agitated, watched this mute stride down the barren trail behind his bobbing burrows, watched him stride on into the lonely, glaring desert so solemn and limitless and mysterious until he vanished in the gray monotony. End of chapter 21